Bladesmiths, welcome to the forge. I'm sure that you noticed on your anvil in front of you, you have a high quality billet of steel. You'll be using that today, but there's a twist. Today, I'm feeling a little bit nautical. While forging your signature blade in your signature style today, you will also have to incorporate an element from the sea anchor or chain into your blade's construction using a sand mai or inlay technique. Good luck, bladesmiths. Your 10 minute design window starts now. I'm gonna use a chain that's the right size and I think I can work it. I'm designing a, a buoy knife because it's always superior cut. It's my favorite. I build up knives to be durable, functional, high performance blade is where it's at. I'm gonna use a little anchor chain because the anchors, I don't know what they're made out of. I'm just gonna go with a plain or uh, buoy style butcher knife. It's a simple knife to make. I feel really good about this because I'm good at adapting. Ideas start flowing and I'm starting to think, okay, uh, chain. Chain's something I can cut straight pieces out of. I can put a handle on it. As I'm designing the blade, I am thinking I'm gonna go with something I love to make, which is somewhere between a sax and a sheep's foot. This is my chance to take an absolute surprise and turn it into something completely functional, maybe even beautiful if I do a good enough job. The design period is now closed. Grab your steel because your three hour forge time starts now. First thing I grab, those smaller links. The chain is so heavy. Really, all of us has got to work together because we've got to break at least one link before anybody can have their own. I work with junk iron all the time in my shop, so nothing's the right shape when I start with it. My plan is to take the wrought iron, flatten it out, and get two flat pieces, and then sandwich it on both sides of the W2. I'm gonna get both my pieces in the fire at the same time, and so when I get one cold, I can swap it out with the old and work it until I combine them. I'm just trying to turn that crap into something that looks like a knife. <laughs> Something's ain't getting hot, man. The piece of W-2 is like 10 inches long, and I want to get the rod iron, draw it out at least to that length and that width, and sandwich and uh, forge weld them all together. Here we go. My biggest concern coming into this challenge is getting a solid forge weld from rod iron to this high carbon steel. Today's my first time ever using a power hammer. It is so cool, it's so efficient, so fast. It makes everything about this a dream come true. Okay, this is the son of a bitch now. Damn it. I realized that I can't get the rod iron the perfect size as the W2. I'm running out of time. So I just had to cut them short. I think we have our first stack. I'm a little nervous welding the W2 and the rod iron together. This is something I've never done. It might not be the damn purdiest thing, but maybe it'll work. When I get the wrought iron straight, I cut both pieces and then sandwich it on both sides of the W-2 and go for a forge weld and hope for the best. There goes nothing. Buster is just cooking that metal like you wouldn't believe it. I got on the power hammer. It's not going real good. I made a couple of missed licks and got my blade too thin right in the center. And I'm seeing inclusions in bad places in my blade, so I'm just trying to grind off what I can. It's not working. I'm not feeling good at all about it. My wrought iron and my high carbon steel, they've been drawn out to a sufficient length. And now it's time to start welding my billet together. So Rachel is over here. She's been at the welder for a while. Hopefully, everything comes together real nice. Sam Mai is a technique I really know very little about, and I really cannot wait to give this a shot. My biggest concern at this point is that the welds are not going to stick. When it comes down to forge welding, you never know. You never know until you're done. Well, that don't look good. Man. I seen a cold shut on my blade, and I just went, oh my gosh. This blade's ruined. Come on, bitch. Sometimes you can save them, sometimes you can't. Hope I can pull this off. But I said, no, you're going to pull it off. Damn, they're there. Yeah, Sean's eating up his blade for a quench. I don't know if the other two are quenching or not. Shazam! 
That's how you do it, boys. I quenched my blade, but then I pulled my blade out, and I could see a, just a slight warp. But with time ticking down, I feel like I brought my A game and probably the best that I could do. I'm noticing that I'm getting bends in my blade, so I'm trying to straighten it out during the normalizing process, which is not a real good idea. Don't hit that anymore. Please don't hit that blade anymore. Come out the second time on a normalize, it's crooked again after straighten it, but that's all I got. I done run out of time. Hey, it's now, never. I got to dip this thing. Big flame out. There you go. It's a good way to lose some beard hair there. Do you see that? It looks fairly straight. It does. When I finally get the belt sander figured out, I am grinding away, and I realize my blade is a little too long and thin. But time is flying by. It's time to get my blade quenched. Five, four, three, two, one. Bladesmiths, this round is over. All right, Bladesmiths, welcome to our strength test. Today is the wooden crate chop. I'm going to take each of your blades and attempt 10 strikes through this wooden crate. It's going to test the overall durability of your knife, edge holding. And we're going to see not what your blades can do to this crate, but what the crate can do to your blades. Sean, you're up first. You ready? Yes, sir. Let's have some fun. That's what a chopper should do. Just a few little things right in here in your choil. That's sharp. I'd like to see that taken down. Narrowing down here would have made it a little more comfortable too. Swinging something this big and heavy, you want to have as much control as possible. Contouring with that palm swell in there is a big help in holding and wielding this knife. No damage to the edge or anything. Nicely done. Thank you. Rachel, you ready? I'm ready. All right, let's do it. You okay? <laughs> I'm high on life right now. Well, Rachel, you lost that little flake there. Nothing else seems to have opened up. The biggest problem I have with this knife is the balance. There's a lot of weight up here. There's not a lot of knife to support that tip. And whenever I'd strike on the crate, it's actually smashing into me in the webbing of the hand right there. Your edge is good, though. It's still sharp. Held up nicely. Good job. Thank you. Buster, how you feeling? Insecure now. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. Well, Buster, we've got a crack going from spine to edge, right where that thin spot is. I figured it was. That is a serious malfunction right there. It's only being held in this little belly of the clip. And if we go to straighten it for a sharpness test, I feel it's going to break off. I understand. I'm sorry, but for safety reasons, we're not going to be able to proceed to the sharpness test with your knife. OK. Bladesmiths, the tests here in the forge are designed to be intentionally brutal for a reason. Not every bladesmith makes a blade that can complete the tests. Buster, unfortunately, your weapon has suffered catastrophic blade failure, and I have to ask you to please leave the forge. I'm feeling very disappointed. I just came to prove to myself that I could compete and that I was better than some. 